since one of the deadliest attacks on the LGBTQ community in American history in on June 24th, 1973, a fire broke out at a French Quarter gay bar called the Upstairs Lounge. More than 100 people were inside and 32 of them died. There's overwhelming evidence it was arson. The suspect had been kicked out of the bar earlier that day and threatened to set it on fire. But he was never charged and he died a year later. In the aftermath, the lack of attention from fire, the lack of attention the fire got from the city, the media, and the church became a tragedy in itself. There have been events all day today to remember the victims, and Rachel Hanley met a woman who says she lost the man she loved in the fire and barely avoided being a victim herself. Fire broke out in a second floor bar last night, killing 29 people and injuring 15. Half a century later, Regina Adams still remembers how she felt. We were being treated like we weren't human beings. You know, this is a bunch of animals that died. It's not important. She met Reginald Eugene Adams Jr. when he was a Jesuit scholar. And the more we sat at the table having a beer and just chit chat, the more we fell in love. They decided to spend the rest of their lives together. In August of that year, we, 1973 of that year, we were going to have a commitment service, so the month before the fire. That day, Regina and Reggie were at the upstairs lounge together. At some point, Regina left to get her checkbook. A few minutes later, she was walking back to the bar and heard sirens. I met his mother and father, and it was a month later that I had to call him and tell him that he died in the fire. He and the other 31 victims of the fire were largely ignored by the city and the media since there was such a strong taboo against LGBTQ plus people. <laughs> On Saturday, a ceremony remembered them the way they should have been in the first place. It's important for us to really step up and honor our fallen to make sure that we remember so it doesn't happen again. We've come a long way in 50 years, far more, we've come a lot longer uh, farther than the people who died could have ever possibly imagined, but we still have a ways to go. It started at St. Mark's United Methodist Church. After the fire, it was one of the few willing to hold a funeral for the victims. Regina was especially hurt by that, given Reggie's deep ties to the Catholic Church. And they just turned their back on him like he was a subhuman. After that, a jazz funeral procession marched to the former upstairs lounge. When it got there, the names of the victims were read again. One is pretty familiar to Regina by now. She legally changed her first and last name to Regina Adams to honor Reggie. As I was deprived of our commitment cer ceremony, but I was committed to carrying him with me my whole life. Other victims can only be carried by strangers. Some families didn't claim their loved ones' bodies after the fire. 50 years later, two of them still haven't been identified. Rachel Handley, Eyewitness News. And there is more happening tomorrow. In the morning, there will be a panel discussion about the fire. Then in the afternoon, more documentary screenings and a dramatic reading of the story of the fire. All the details are on WWLTV.com.